Welcome, welcome. We just finished with prayer, inshallah. And, um, Wa alaikum salam, beloved Sheikh and family. All praise, all Go praise. ahead and continue. I'll wait on you all to complete. I stuck for a Well, inshallah, once you are here, let me do a couple, uh, just two kasas by Sheikh Ahmed Obama. We'll let Sister Asi open up for you, inshallah. Yes, um, sir. I mean, stuck for a Be he, Hadiyah Sheikh Sufi Ba, Hadiyah Darman Baki Kadim. Dear Sheikh Far, Dr. Wali, all praises. Allahumma salli wa salli wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Malana Muhammadin wa alihi wa sabihi wa taqabba manili wa ashi kaal karimi kaal ta'iban ilay kabi astaghfirullah bihi astaghfirullah ladim wa atub alayhi min zawaharin wa min gayub astaghfirullah ladim wa atub alayhi min zawaharin wa min gayub Sal to Ub Aki, Wajadilahi, Makiritan, Minjumla till Manahi, Luktula U Minjumla till Saga Idima Al Kabaydi, Wamindama Idi, Lafiru Lifikul and Mata, Kadama, Mata Akara, Wabi Nahuma, Fahim Nial Ilma was in the Ilma, Amalan, Adaban Wafatma, Rabbi Alixifil Uluma Nafia, Wajal Ayati, Minchaka Imania, Ixif the Alas Rawa, Wago Amida, Yakaira Mankasha, Fasirangamida. Is my Jamia Mata Fara Kalada, Kati Minal Kari Wasa Fiel Kalada, Li Kulada Tifakil Azamaya, Rabi Bikun Val Sasi Man Kalamia, Abriya Akramu Fetalawa, Kairan Katiran Minko Wal Halawa, Barikriala Huma Fi Hayati, Vajal Fuadi Watanar Hayati, Abriya County Bishra Kuli Manya Tu, Wali Zawahira Adin Mayal Gayu. Kabulan Kunu be he tied on Manazanu, we were Alma Asi, were a fatty, were a tal al Pulad and a tal. Lati with a mutacum, the Rahmatical Yarahmanu, Yarahi mu calf, ha ya, I ain't sword. Kufi to Kuladar in your la who be serial at Ilaha la la who. Abli Muradi Yakama Awahu, be serial at Ilaha la la who. Yasiria Usra, come out a who be serial at Ilaha la la who. Allah, Nabi Mustafi Allah, who shall be la ilaha Allah, who Salatan Mugnin be Salamala, he be Syria Allah, Allah, who Bismillah Rahman Irahim, Sponor of Beaker Bilizati, Mayasipun, Salamun Allah Mercedi, Hamdulillah, he rap bill, Allah mean, Waspal on a lane will be a fee at Tom Hub and a class to feed the rainy Allah, who. Barky Shek Sufi Ba, 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 the Jeff. Beloved Oracle, I see the floor is yours, inshallah, to open up for our Shek Far, all praises. Alhamdulillah. Um, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Peace to you all, family. Um, I want to thank the Most High and Shek Sufi Ba and Sheikh Wali for allowing me to have this um this moment. I wanted to just I wanted to introduce you to Sheikh Wali and I wanted you to understand a little bit more about who he is and what the Fard uh, Fardania is truly about. Uh, when I initially met uh, Sheikh uh, Sheikh uh, Wali last year, we were in Virginia. He was doing um, one of his classes on detox, and um, you know afterwards, me and him spoke. <laughs> at that time I was still young so when he um you know he asked me well how did you feel about it or are you interested in it and I was like no nah, I'd rather do some smooth moves so <laughs> you know he, and sister I she's a testament to this and uh, she, he went straight to her appalled and you know after that we we uh that was the fast track to our friendship so when Sheikh uh Sufi appointed him the Sheikh of the Fardania, um, due to my background in the nation of, with the nation of Islam, you know, I I went to Sheikh Sufi my, directly and asked him if he could, you know, if I could be under his tutelage, his mentorship, in which he granted to me access. Um, from there, again, you know, the, with the rapport that him and I have established throughout this time, you know, he, 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 he under I I discussed with him as we had similar uh, as we had similar missions. Um, you know, he went through a certain period of time where it came to like black magic attack, spiritual attack. He went through spiritual warfare, in which you know I went to him seeking guidance, 
And not only was he able to assist me in that, giving me, you know, some zickers and things to do, but he also, you know, he, he was in tune where he, um, he protected me uh, from, from spiritual warfare as well. So not only is he, you know, and his guidance is wonderful when it comes to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, how to, how to eat, to live, and also I wanted to give thanks and, I, and gratitude to Sheikh Wali, you know, for being, you know, the leader of the Fordania and all praises. Maybe, you know, hopefully we'll be able to hear more from him soon, inshallah. So, so without further ado, I want to, I want to say, I want to introduce Sheikh Wali for the second time. Assalamu alaikum, beloved family of light. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I bear witness. First, I say in the name of Allah, the originator of all life, the revealer of all truth, the sender, the raiser of all prophets, the raiser of all of their saints and walis. We thank Allah and all of his manifestations. The first manifestation being the greatest one, which was his own manifestation of this physical form that we now live in. As the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the first creation, what he calls the self-creation of God, because he said if somebody else created God, God had to be self-created, otherwise whoever created him would be God. Not implying that God never wasn't where he had to be created, but he's talking about the physical form. So once he started manifesting the attribute, the scene, this, what we now call the human body, was the first manifestation of the scene, that attribute. We thank him for that work and that foundational blueprint of existence that we're still existing in. Though we abuse it, though we are still learning to use it, we have it. And now he has set up a law in that which allows him to manifest the attribute, the eternal, to where now he exists and lives and continues on in the person of his people. So we thank him for that magnificent first manifestation. And then later as we begin to decline some from our original state and in need of guidance to stay afloat in his wonderful act of mercy, he sent prophets into the world to elevate fallen humanity, to keep us from going completely into uh, amnesia. He sent prophets and the last and greatest of them and the last revealed book came through Muhammad, peace be upon him, 1400 years ago, who brought the Holy Quran. We thank Allah for all of his prophets. When we're saying Muhammad is as if we're saying all of his prophets because we know we make no distinction. Muhammad, Muhammad represents the sum total of all of the prophets and messengers at one time. So we thank him and we thank them. And among every prophet or messenger, among every prophet or messenger's community, they always had the elite class who would rise to the top of understanding, who had the inner secrets of their teachings, who developed a priesthood, so to speak, of their inner knowledge. And these would later become the leader of communities where the secrets of Allah's wisdom was kept. And we've had some great ones to come down the great line of divine. But we're fortunate to be disciples of one who according to one of his Kasai's, he says that Allah gave him the secrets to all of the Qutubs, gave him the secrets to all of the Walis. And this was his prayer. He said it twice in that Kasai in the beginning and in the end. We thank him for Sheikh Ahmed Ubam, the sum total of all the sheikhs and the walis. So in my view, in thanking him, we're thanking all of the great 
leaders of the Tadu Khans and all of the Walus that came before them because they summarize and have placed their secrets inside of our shapes. And then we must go further though, because we would not know about Sheikh Ahmed Bamba to the degree that we do. I had heard of him, I had read about him, did a dissertation upon Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and Master Farah Muhammad when I was in high school, before I even knew who he was. But now, thanks to one in our midst, who went and spent his entire life dedicating to being a master of these practices, to being a embodiment to being one who, like Rumi said, when you find a shake, you want to find a shake that's like a pomegranate that's bursting open. I could stop right there because you already know who I'm speaking of. There's only one shake that I know of that is like that, and that is our illustrious beloved shake, Sufi Ba. And I will be remiss as a disciple, devotee, and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to not be thankful but the Ensign Tamil that visited North America, his teacher, who he believed was the Supreme Being in person, the perfect manifestation of the 99 attributes. And he, as his teacher, he, uh, he as his student, his messenger, guided me to Sheikh Ahmed Bamba through Sheikh Suki Ba. I will tell you all more about that in the future. So in all of their holy names, I give the greetings of peace of Asalaam Alaikum. Pardon my lengthy introduction, but I have to pay homage where it is due, and it is due in so many places. Um, but I think those foundational pieces that we mentioned kind of cover and summarize all. I want to thank my beloved Sheikh Sufi Fah for asking me, uh, for commissioning me, to assigning me to deliver anything of truth anything of weight, anything of relevance to our order. And you all always hear me say it is always a divine privilege to speak to Allah and stand before Allah in the person of his people. So thank you, beloved for uh, family for a second week. Thank you, Sheikh Mustafa for covering the admin and, and opening up the call. Uh, I never fear, say to Allah. <laughs> It's interesting. It's the first time that I've been teaching that I have a Sadi Allah happen. Alhamdulillah. So, um, Alhamdulillah. So thank you, Sheikh Mustafa, for covering the admin and, and constantly being that backup that I can fall on. I was late tonight, quite in my tardiness due to some te technical difficulties that I have run into. But I always know that we're covered, we're safe when we have a shake like deep thoughts in the background covering, you know, being the missing pieces to my puzzle. He's done it in the Dr. Detox classes and he continues to do so. So we pray that Allah bless him for his kitma. Rakesh Sheikh Sufi Ba to you, beloved. And to the oracle of the Fordania, who has sent many doers and offered her esoteric uh, intuition and in the form of readings, in the form of deeds, in the form of acting as almost a, uh, uh, a medicine woman to the shape. There's times where she'll just tune in and know exactly what stone that I need based off of what's going on in my being. And we know that healers need healers too. So I'm thankful to have a healer like Sister Asiya Klothra, the Oracle of the Padani, I call her. Uh, gratitude is the greatest thing, family. So I'm taking long showing gratitude and I pray that you all will forgive me because uh, this I've come through a tremendous test to get to the point of being shaken this order. And that test would have been even harder had I not had those who have prayed for me. I want to thank my assistant, Sheikh Idris Ba, who is always calling and always having a smiling face. Even if you don't hear from him, you can just think of his smiling face and it'll make you happy. I want to thank uh, beloved Brother Shane, who Sheikh Sufi uh, put him with me 
and he has acted in a way of an at man and has brought a lot of his skills to the Fordania. I want to say thank the beloved Sheikh Zulu who sent out that 70,000 Bismillah al Rahim for me on the passing of my daughter and uh, made a set of magnificent beads for me um, and, and, and just the wonderful works that he does. Thank you all for being available in, in, in uh, keeping me in your thoughts and in your prayers. Times I can feel you. And you may not have heard from me, but I knew that I was on your mind and on your heart in the form of prayers for me. So I really appreciate you. Thank you for coming back for a second week. And I pray that something we say today can be a benefit to you in your everyday life. Uh, I'm trying to break out of the habit of wearing these. these uh, so I'm going to hold your questions to the end because these readers supposedly look fashionable on me. So I've gotten used to wear them and I've ruined my vision. That and a combination of uh, I missed when Sheikh Sufi taught us that when you do Salatul Fatih, you put it on your heart, not in your face, because the light generated from it is so bright that it can actually put out your vision. I know for a fact that that is true because um, I do more Salatul Fatih. That's one of my favorite salawats. And I didn't hear him say that until a year later or something. And I'm like, man, I put a lot of Salatul Fatih in my eyes. And so my vision is dim. So if you all see me squinting, that's me being stubborn to having to submit to the so for that reason, uh, you can hold your, put your questions in the chat and I'll do my best to be timely enough to cover it toward the end. Uh, if somebody can put a time watch on me, I'm gonna do my best to not go over an hour. We already have lost some time, but we're gonna try to uh, do our best. Like Dr. Khaled Muhammad used to say, we're not gonna be long, but we're gonna definitely be strong. So let's start off where we left off last week. Uh, you know, I'm my biggest critic, so you know I studied the video already, as I did. Um, I get a lot out of listening because, it, 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 you know, sometimes you don't know how a law is coming through you. So you have to become the student sometimes to your own teaching because you realize it's not you teaching. There's a law using you as an instrument. So sometimes I become the audience to lectures that I have done by Allah's grace. And I did that. And um, I, 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 it was it was it was way better than I thought it was. Honestly, uh, all praise is due to Allah. Um, so I think what we left off, what we were talking about, the benefits of fasting in terms of it taking away evil and indecency. This is something that I really want to talk about. Um, the next time, uh, beloved Sheikh, I, it came to me, Sheikh Mustafa, what I wanted you to put in was the Essene Gospel of Peace. If you still have that document somewhere, I know I sent it to you in the WhatsApp before. If you got that document, if I wanted to put anything on the screen today, it would be that document. Because the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, said something in there that relates directly to the Quranic verse where it says, fasting keeps one away from evil and indecency because he talked about Satan's in the blood, influencing the blood. He talked about a day where the Satan's, he refers to the powers that be as Satan's collectively. So it's clear that the prophet Esau was talking about a group of people. Whether we want to argue that it was a, a being that was in a group of people, uh, Okay, he sent it to me. Thank you. Um, if you can figure out a way to put it into the chat, oh, that would stop for a lot, Jake. I can I can post in chat, but um, it's gonna show up sideways. You you the, you're the man, Jake. You got it. You got it. You want to leave it up like this sideways, like this? That's okay. Uh, you can leave it up, and then we go when uh, you can take it down because I don't know if it needs if that's if, up if it if takes a look. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, page. We'll, 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 I'll go straight to the page and I can turn it around. Okay, so yes, go. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you, beloved Jake. So, okay, good. We got that ready on deck, queued up. We appreciate that. So he talks about the Satan. And he calls them that collectively, the Satans. He says, 
will be influencing you to eat more and more and more. She talked about if you want the angels to rejoice in your body, then sit at the table of God, but once in a day. If you want the angels to rejoice in your body, then sit at the table, but once a day. And then he even went further to say something that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said very, very emphatically and clearly that he who eats three meals a day and beyond, Satan lives in his body, basically possesses him. This is what the prophet Isa was teaching to the Essenes. Uh, if any of you know, the Essenes will be kind of like the Sufi or the Christian. Uh, you know, each group has a esoteric community in, in, in Christianity, the, that group was called the Essene Brotherhood. They studied the Aramaic teachings of Isa. Um, and a lot of the focal point was on diet. If you go read this document that our beloved Sheikh just put into the text, uh, that basically just put into the text, uh, you will see that it sounds almost like how to eat to live 2000 years ago. So this is why we know when the Quran tells us to not make distinctions among the prophets and the messengers, this is why, because they always back each other up. Their followers argue with, with each other, but the prophets and messengers and masses themselves always agree. Uh, he talked about parasites in the body, he talked about uh, their influence on the brain. He talked about the gut being a brain. Uh, he even went so far as to say that we need to be sweet smelling in the nostrils of God, where there is a scripture that says that we stink in the nostrils of God. Well, naturally, if we have been violating dietary law, that would be the case. We would be opposite of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad calls being other than ourselves. And of course, ourselves are natural, righteous Muslims by nature, because Islam is the natural religion, not only of man, but the Quran says of God, that, that Islam is Allah's religion. Islam is the nature, it's not a religion, which is using that for the lack of a better term, uh, but it is the nature of God himself. The idea of submitting to the laws of existence is something that is embedded in Allah's own genetic makeup, and he put it in us being made in his image and likeness. So when we submit to these things, we benefit. Well, we open up the call talking about as we were falling, Allah would to balance it with sin, uh, prophets and messengers to guide following humanity. And one of the things that uh, the most recent that we were given was a holy month in order to patch this up. Because if you notice all of the religions fast and as much as we eat in America, we should be doing all of the fast with everybody. We should just be doing Ramadan, we should be doing any kind, we should be searching around, looking for religions, finding out what they fast on fast with them. That's how much we overindulge here in the West. Everybody's fast we should be doing. It. So this is why in the, in the nation of Islam, we used to do two fasts. We would do the fast with the Muslim world, and then we did uh, uh, another fast in the month of December. And it served various purposes. The main one was to take us from celebrating Christmas. But we fasted twice a year and we fasted all in between. At least three days out of the month, fasting is a main focal point of the original way. Purifying the body and understanding that when this body is empty, it helps. When this brain is empty, it helps to make this brain more full. And then the opposite is true. When this brain uh, is less empty, this brain is, is less full when this brain is more full. So, Master Fora Muhammad, the end time to know the top of Anubi Elijah Muhammad said, food keeps us here and the same takes us away. So in order to find a way to eat, to live, then you have to have the perfect mizan. You have to have the perfect balance between how much you should eat and how much you should not. So our dietary way of life was structured around more so fasting than feasting. Feasting is the way of the West. Fasting is the way of the East. Fasting is the original man's way, eating less and less. In the West, feasting and eating more and more. Really, it really shouldn't be called a feast because a feast is celebrating when you fasted. 
It really shouldn't be called breakfast because breakfast is breaking a fast. We haven't fasted to break fast. We've been eating all day long. So no fast has ever taken place. But when you know what fasting is, then you can begin to break fast. Me, I break fast when it's time to eat, usually around four o'clock is my time on the time in the days that I'm eating. Okay. But there's definitely a fast that is taking place in between. But for most Westerners, there's no fast that is taking place. The only fast that's taking place is us breaking real fast to the kitchen when we get anything that we think is hunger or any kind of taste bud that we end up is hunger. And so we're going to learn throughout the course of these talks the difference between hunger and appetite. You're going to learn that appetite is something that can be controlled. You're going to learn that the appetite is really the fuel of the four enemies. When we talk about mastering the nabs and the destroying the four enemies, the really, the diet automatically kills the four enemies. You really master fasting, the other, all of the rest of what we talk about the four enemies becomes easy. But because we're in a, a world that uh, practices devilishment, if you look at the word devil, it is actually lived the word lived spelled backwards. So we're living backwards. That's devilish. See, living right to left, where you take everything from the perspective of the whole and then you break it into pieces to understand it. That's righteousness, right? But the left hand path, something more satanic, something more satian, something more uh, in the lessons say, how do you make devil by separating the germ? When you start separating things and giving the illusion of separation, you know, devil, diablos, double. When you give the indication that there's not one, or that there's not one perspective, or that there's not a holistic perspective, then devilishment is created. Well, the standard American diet is the main fuel of devil devilishment, not just in terms of health. But just period, it is the mainstay of devilishment because it encourages overindulgence. It encourages eating the wrong foods. It encourages eating them at the wrong time. And it encourages eating them too often throughout the day with no rest. And over time is amazing because the more technological developments that has happened, we eat more and more and more. Our people in the past were more privy because we had less access to material resources, but it forced us to eat less and it forced us to eat more natural because we couldn't eat on the king's diet. We had to eat what we could grow. When I was growing up, my grandmother, my father's mother was from the South, from Louisiana. She was a farmer growing up. So it was very much still a part of her. And she hated buying any, she hated even buying bread from the store. She felt like that was disgracing her own abilities to cook. Most of what we ate came from that backyard when I was with them. When I visited them, that was, those were the healthiest times of my life. Um, and so on the standard American diet, these are things that we have abandoned. So of course, Allah is foreseen. So he foresaw this. He foresaw a day where overindulgence will be the order of the day. Isms is amazing that the natural way is considered an ism. You see how they insult Allah's original way? Vegetarianism. So vegetarianism is the ism or the practice of eating vegetables. But vegetables is the original way. How is that an ism? It should be meatism. Cannibalism, for real. Shouldn't be, uh, 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 or, 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 you know, they, they focus more on putting the natural way into, well, I shouldn't say cannibalism, even though in Europe they had, they had cases of that where they were eating human beings too and trying to make it seem like it was us. But that's another subject. But the, the ism should be eating meat, eating dead flesh. Um, and of course, we know there is flesh that we eat. We're not telling anybody that eating meat is forbidden because we're not allowed to say something is forbidden when Allah is allowed it. But we know that it was not the original way. And even in our practices of eating meat, everywhere throughout the world, even here in America, meat was the side dish. Meat was the side pork. You had a plate of something else and a piece of meat, a piece of chicken, a couple of pieces of chicken, not a whole plate of chicken. 
thinking and doing stuff. You see how backwards it became? Now, now the side is a little thing of mashed potatoes, green beans, or something like that. And then the whole plate of the, the thing that used to be the side of it. So this is lived, this is life lived backwards. This is devilish, man. We're living backwards. Do you see? So now we need righteousness. We need the opposite of that to go back to the original way. And this holy practice of the holy month of Ramadan is one of Allah's prescriptions for getting us back to that way. Intended to take away the power of appetite and us still thinking that it's hunger. For us taking away the power of eating uh, all throughout the night and even all throughout the day, even the habit of over drinking because we're drinking way too much too. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the body doesn't need all of that water, especially if you're eating foods that are full of water. So we're just overindulgence is the way of the West and fasting and abstinence is the way of the original man, original people. So this is what we're talking about when we say fasting. We talked about this, uh, we defined it on the last week. We said that fast, something that ref, uh, refers to speed, uh, the speed or the faster happens when this, the digestive system slows down. Only when the digestive slow, system slows down does the life force in the body move faster. Only when the quickening of the spirit the, Bi the Bibles and the West uh, misuse of this word spirit. See, when the original people say spirit, what we're really meaning is divine intelligence. The West called that spirit. But that's really a misuse of the word because spirit literally comes from the Latin word spiral, which means air. See, the breath of Allah, he breathed into Adam. When, yeah, but you're talking about the air that's coming out of a holy being. How sweet do you think that air is? Isa said, we should be, our breath should be the, the scent of the lilies of the valley, the flowers of the field. That's how our breath should smell. But that can only happen if the body is that fresh internally. So Allah's spirit, because he is holy, because he is the, the uh, produce, he is the pure, naturally his breath, his spirit is going to be pure. And that's what he intends for us to obtain is that same thing. So we're misusing a lot of these terms. And this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called English a bastard language. And this is why he said that we must master it first and then ultimately come out of it. He said in the next world, there won't be, these languages won't even be remembered. We won't even remember it. And he said that we will learn way more in the Arabic anyway, because it's more akin to the being because it's the original language from Allah. Naturally, it's more original and carries more original content. So when we say the word Ramadan, what is the Arabic original content of that? You're dealing with the fire, the burning, what fire? When you increase, when you slow down the digestive system and the life force moves faster, then you're gonna you're creating heat in the body. It's an internal heat that's being produced, not like a fever, but similar in a way that it's there to burn away what shouldn't be there, to purify it, that type of heat. And you feel it, you feel it. This is why um, we're thankful when Ramadan comes in a season, that's cool because we're already dealing with the internal heat uh, anyway, but then when it's hot externally on top of it, man, that, that Ramadan is a challenging Ramadan day. But get this, it's only challenging because we're not doing something that Master Farah Muhammad said. The Insan Khalil Master Farah Muhammad, who taught on Elijah Muhammad said that fasting with the right foods, see? Not just fasting. It's a lot of people that fast, so they think. A lot of people that abstain from food. So with the right food. So let's just say if you spent uh, last week, I mentioned that we need to establish a pre-fasting diet. And our beloved Sheikh said that he would allow it, that we're going to do, we should be doing maybe that, that almost that whole month for real. Now, this is only necessary if you're not cleansing on a regular basis, okay? That at least the last two weeks of the month before Ramadan should be spent cleansing. 
You should be emptying your gut out as much as possible. That's what those last two weeks should be spent doing. And it should be spent doing that so that your Ramadan experience can be a pure one so that you can focus on the power of the word of the Holy Quran and the power of the Kasai's and these practices that we're doing. Most of the forgiveness that we seek and is a lot of it is dietary forgiveness because we can't even focus on what we're asking forgiveness for because our brains are full of toxins during that period. And that should not be the case. Our, our Ramadan should be a blissful experience. You at the night of power with an upset stomach because for the first time, your body is rested from the overeating of the wrong foods and too often. When really the night of power should be filled with every time you come up with Fajr, you should hear that, that, that hum that I described last week come up. You should feel the Salat raising from the base of your spine because the Salat and the Kundalini that the, the yogis talk about is the same thing. It's just more so. It's more so in the Salat that we're talking about. In the ancient, they call it raising the salat. Because when you're coming up, the point is to get the salat to, to kiyam or to stand up. Well, when it stands up, it shouldn't have to break through years and years of waste. It's going to stand and go more strong if there's uninhibited flow. So this is where the formula of life comes in, but I where I talked, we talked about. The V equals P minus O. Vitality equals power minus obstruction. If there's no obstruction, power can increase, which equals more vitality. But the lack of vitality is going to happen when there's more obstruction, right? So these things we will experience if we were cleansing on a regular. And if we can't be disciplined enough to cleanse on a regular, uh, then at least the last two weeks before the Fordani, that should be our way. And uh, I spoke to beloved uh, Dr. Yazid earlier this week. I was very, very glad to speak to a very excellent Nara student who went through the course and he was saying that, you know, this is something that we need to establish in the masters. And we can be the pioneers of this. Every order has their way. There's the Dakari way. There's the Tajani way. Well, we know that, of course, we're disciples of Sheikh Abdul Bamba, and everybody that is a Mori is not going to do what we're doing. But guess what? We're a, a distinct group of Mori's that follow Sheikh Sufi Bamba. By Allah's grace, the, the, the Mori's, the, the Fordania Mori's that are with Sheikh Far Wali, we're a distinct group of Mori's. We're not like everybody else, right? We have a Sheikh that's not like everybody else. He's very unique. Right? So our way, and we need to impose this, not impose it by you know forcing it through our language, but through our actions. We need to impose this instead of the, the, the uh, Muslim world and many of the masjids that have really succumbed to the diet of the West. They have imposed that diet onto us. So I have seen it happen where even old members of the Nation of Islam, they used to eat once a day and once every two days and fasting 12 days. Now these people can barely eat from sunup to sundown because they've been at these mosques, you know, eating, overeating and eating all night and doing the stuff that they have done. This is deviation. The prophet, peace be upon him, did not eat like this. He did not teach like to eat like this. These are interjections. And these are uh, uh, major deviations that hurt us. So our way will be, okay, we have a pre-Ramadan fast that we do. This is our way, right? Everybody will know it. It'll it just become the thing that we do. Oh, we're coming up upon Ramadan. Let's get ready for the pre-Ramadan fast. This is what Sheikh Bar Wali wants to see among us. Now, it's going to be mandatory for the Fordani uh, because this is the assignment I was given when given that is to, you know, to go and prepare, you know, we'll be like the bifall of the West. Well, we, you know, dietary practice, cleanliness, discipline is a pillar for the Fatani. It's just as much a pillar as the other five. Well, the five, we, I guess you could say we got six pillars. Our sixth pillar is to eat the way that Allah intended and as close as nature intended, right? Because we know that in order for these vessels 
made out of sounding clay. In order for these, what do you mean sounding clay? Clay that is meant to sound. Sound what? The frequencies of the 99 names of Allah. In order for you to be a well-lubed, any of you that are musicians, you know that there's nothing better sounding than a well-lubed in instrument, a well-lubed clarinet or saxophone, right? It ain't even about the skill of the musician. How good does the saxophone, how well is it cleaned? which is gonna give you, he blow one note, it's gonna sound good because it's a clean instrument. Well, we are, we, are, we are being called upon to be clean instruments of Allah in the dietary practice of Ramadan on top of the supreme practice. And I, I will offer, humbly offer, the way the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught dietarily as the way um, to be in terms of this pre-Ramadan period to eat less, not more, and to make it matter when we eat, and to eat foods that digest, eat foods that pass the criteria of Mother May. You all know about Mother May that have heard us talk before. Mother May is the three stages of digestion. Mastication, meaning it needs to be chewable. Prophet Isa, in the Essene Gospel of Peace, uh, Sheikh Musa Bapula, the Essene Gospel of Peace, I have it highlighted to death, I think so. Wait, I'm pretty sure we should have to find it. So let's see if we can go to that page where, uh, matter of fact, I'll do one better. Don't pull it up yet. I'm gonna pull it up in the document uh, that you just sent me while I'm talking and I'll find it and then I'll tell you where to put, what page it's on. But in this document, Pro Prophet Issa was saying something about the food needs to be water before you swallow it. Prophet Isa said this, you need to chew the food until it becomes water. Well, imagine trying that with a piece of steak. I ain't talking about with A1 steak sauce on it either. Imagine doing that with something that's not even chewable. It's easy to do that with a handful of strawberries. It's easy to do that with a date. It's easy to do that with grapes. It's easy to do that with meat too, if it's been cooked properly, more so boiled. Honorable Elijah Mama said meat should be boiled more so than even baked or fried. Um, it's better boiled because it, it, it breaks down the tissues and makes it more digestible once it hits the gut. But these are things that we need to consider. We need to let mother May determine the criteria of what we're eating. Uh, I was going to pick on somebody who mentioned something they thought about eating today, but I'm going to leave them alone since, uh, yeah, well, I, I ain't going to do that. But you know things that you can't chew. You know, a handful of particular things that you can't chew until it becomes fluid. You could chew all day long, it's not going to become water. So this is Mother May helping you. If it can be masticated until it becomes water, then it can be absorbed, which is to eat the egg. If it can be absorbed, then it's gonna be less that has to be eliminated. And even if it's more that has to be eliminated, it can be eliminated properly, right? So these are the things that we need to consider when we're thinking about the, the fast of Ramadan. The fast of Ramadan is a way to help us to eat less. It's really to try to break the habit out of us of eating all day. We don't realize it, but that's what it's supposed to do. Is supposed to help us not eat all day. Um, even though many of us go right back to eating all day after that, but that's because we have not yet accepted the belief that we don't have to eat all day. And then we try to use hadiths and different things to justify it. Well, no, I've been at masjids during the month of Ramadan and you all know how Dr. Wali eats. I, fat, I feast twice a week, right? So I'm not even eating every day many times. Uh, and if I make an exception, I, I, I make up for that exception by doing a fast of at least three days or more. So I've been at masjids where they try to force me to eat. Oh, the prophet said in the hadith, you must break fast before you start fast. I said, okay, hand me the water right there. Okay, I just broke fast. You're not going to tell me I have to eat breakfast because you want, that's what you're doing. I don't have to eat that piece of lamb right there in the morning before fajr. And I'm drowsy, can barely bend over and do ruku because I'm about to fall asleep. 
because I just ate some rice and lamb. If you're not going to tell me that that's mandatory to my Islam. This is this is not what should be being done. So uh, in this document, and it, this is what I want you all to do. If you all can send me an email. Matter of fact, I'll, I'm going to drop this document in the portal. So I'm going to send a link out again. Make sure that we uh, are all in the portal because I'll be dropping some dietary jewels in there that we can feed on. And this book is one. One of my goals before I came to the order, I was going to churches, moving under disguise. Uh, this is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had me doing. And my goal was to get this document to be like the mandatory teachings of all churches. I'm trying to get together a group of pastors that will accept Prophet Isa because they're, gonna, they're not going to accept the Honorable Elijah Muhammad saying it. But I'm saying this is what your Jesus said. This is what the one you claim to believe in. This is what he taught dietarily. And it just so happens to line up completely to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says and also lines up completely with what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught 1,400 years ago. So, you know, whether you say the Prophet Musa 4,000 years ago, whether you say the Prophet Isa 2,000 years ago, or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, uh, 1,400 years ago, none of these men and any of the prophets in between taught to eat all day long. None of these men would have had a problem going from sun up to sun down eating because this was their regular way anyway. This was the way that they ate. And I'm going to prove it in this document right here. So okay, as I'm turning the document around, check most of a go-to. Let me make sure this is it. Uh, renew yourselves. Satan is his way. Okay, go to page 14 in the East Seen Gospel. Any questions so far why he's pulling up the, the document for me? I know I kind of just jumped right in, but uh, spirit is high today for some reason. Maybe it's uh, you all's excitement to get back to class, but I feel an abundance of spirit in terms of teaching today. And uh, it just it feels wonderful. Anybody have a question so far while we're waiting? Okay, let me look in the chat, but I haven't been able to eat the best selection of foods. Okay, good. I will send. I will send some. I'll give some dietary recommendations of foods that we should add to the um, to our diets this month. But we only got how many more? What? How many more days do we have? left before almost toward the end so but it's never too late yes mother may absolutely okay yes the double burn heat on top of heat that's right yes fasting will take you to a lot faster and will make a lot move faster in you absolutely Okay. All right, so here we go. This is the prophet Isa teach, teach about the power of fast. Okay. You know, because we used to, as, as Muslims and Sufis, we used to fast. But I just want to show the universality. So a lot of times you'll see me as I teach, I'll pull from every place but the Islamic source because it's more known in the Islamic world. We can bear witness to it by showing everybody else because while the rest of the world try to criticize us as Muslims, we're more on point than everybody else because we're doing what everybody else is teaching is teaching, right? And so I want to prove it here with the prophet Isa. Starting at the top of the page, it says, I tell you truly, God and his laws are not in that which you do. <laughs> See this? God and his law, you, you all are not following God's law, he said. They are not in gluttony, gluttony and wine bibbing. That means getting drunk. So even in the, in the biblical use of wine, getting drunk was not allowed. So people didn't want to say the Bible said drink wine, right? But not wine bibbing. Neither in riotous living, nor in lustfulness, nor seeking after riches, yet, nor yet in your hatred of your enemies. For all these things are far from the true God and from his angels. But all these things come from the kingdom of darkness 
and the Lord of all evils. He's going to get to the diet part later. Okay. The most of this book is talking about diet. All of these things do you carry in yourselves? And so the word of God and the power of God enter not into you because all manner of evil and all manner of abominations have their dwelling in your body and your spirit. And the will of the living God's word and his power may enter you, if you will, that the living God's word and his power may enter you, defile not your body and your spirit. Ah, uh, that don't sound like what you told me, Pastor. That don't sound like what you told me, Reverend. You told me I could just pray over it. That's what you said. Right? You told me that Paul said we don't have to do that no more. But this is not what your master said. We ain't going to go with what Paul so called said. We're going to go with Paul's teacher said. And right here, Paul's teacher is saying that if you will that the living God's word and power may enter in you, defile not your body and your spirit. For the body is the temple of your spirit, and the spirit is the temple of God. So he's saying that your body is the dwelling and the holding place of the spirit. And the spirit, which we would say of divine intelligence, is the holding place of the 99 attributes. We know what that's saying when it says the spirit is the temple of God, right? The Ka and the Ba. We know what that's talking about. That's Sufis, especially as Sufis who follow Saint Dr. Dubama. Purify, therefore, the temple. See? Cleanse the temple. Purify. The Holy Quran says Allah loves those who do what? Purify themselves. He loves that. When you go out of your way to remain pure, even though we're in a world of impurity and a, especially a world that makes it way more easier to be impure, he loves that we will go out of our way to purify. He's not saying I love those who are pure, <clears throat> pardon me, because he doesn't expect you to stay that way in an impure world, but he loves that you try to be by constantly purifying yourself, right? And of course, as those habits develop, sooner or later, you'll be pure especially if you're doing the um, Kasai's like a Astaghfirullah and Kasai's like Yarahman Yarahim, which literally tell you things like remove and erase the attraction of sin out of my heart. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in the lesson, uh, in, the, in a letter that he wrote about the lessons in the problem book, he said that you cannot understand these lessons that Allah gave me. He's talking about the Supreme Wisdom lessons, what the 5% is called 120 which is only 100, 120 of them, not the whole 154 called what Supreme Wisdom, but 120 of them minus the problem book, right? These lessons, he says, you will not understand this until your heart is absolutely free of sin. But the only way your heart can become absolutely free of sin is in two ways. You have to purify your body. That's done through fasting. And you have to purify your spirit and your heart through prayer. And that's done in the most supreme way through practices by Sheikh Ahmed Obama. So I'm going to be bold enough to say that the teachers are, this is the beauty of the handshake that's in the Fordania logo, because I believe that the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with the practices of Sheikh Ahmed Obama is the only way to completely perfect self. Master Farah Muhammad brought the dietary part and the knowledge of God, the personal knowledge of God part, because Prophet Muhammad said you need to know Allah before you worship him. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad spent most of his time, most of his time talking about what? The knowledge of God and the knowledge of self. Because he didn't want us searching for God. He was coming to bring us face to face with God. And that face to face is you looking in the mirror and seeing Allah's dwelling place. And then he provided the diet to facilitate the purity of that dwelling place. And then when you use the Kasai's of Sheikh Ahmed Obama, that's the perfect formula for God. That's the first perfect formula for supremacy. And I'm going to say the only place because none of the other uh, Walis, they say that their, their formulas bring blessings. And they, you know, they would say these formulas purify you because any verse of Quran, any prayer will purify you, but not to the degree of Sheikh Ahmed Obama's Kasai's. That's me talking. I'll say it. And then I'll say it again. That the Astaghfirullah be he, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, literally say it in there. Sheikh Ahmed Obama said, You memorize Astaghfirullah be he, he will live inside of your body. So now let's add Astaghfirullah be he to eating once a day, once every two days, once every three days, fasting three days out of a month, 
right? Keeping the blood stream pure. This is what Sheikh Ahmed Obama did. This is what Serene Salihu did. This is what I bet if what Bobby will, if I were a betting man, if I get around any of them, I'm gonna be able to see it. That the the, the you know anybody that's spending their life doing these formulas are gonna be powerful, but the most powerful ones are gonna be the ones that had an emphasis on diet. Um, and that is it's just a, it's a main thing. I studied the history of a lot of saints and masters and yogis because you know you should study those that you desire to be like and attain. And I, I like to know they regular day-to-day -day habits and without a doubt, every one of them had pure dietary practice. Whether it was fasting regularly, whether they didn't eat meat or whether they ate a particular way or, or you know different things that they ate, but dietary cleanliness was as much their religion as the rest of the religion. It's only when you come over here with Reverend Fatback and Reverend Chicken Wing that now diet is not important. And pardon me, you know, that's not an insult to Christianity. That's an insult to a misled Christian because the prophet here, Isa, is not teaching this. So th this is the original. And now let me tell you something about this document before I read the rest of it. Because I'm going to y'all got me on fire. Um uh, this document was found in the Vatican family. In the Vatican, there was a gentleman, uh, his name is on the front page here. He, he was working there in the Vatican. Um, it may have almost been like in a janitorial capacity he was working. And one day as he was cleaning, somebody left one of the vaults open. He was curious enough to go in there. When he went in there, he saw all of these manuscripts, Aramaic manuscripts on the floor. He opened it up and found the dietary teachings of the prophet Esau, which was the original baptism. So this, according to him, was the real baptism of Jesus. This is what you had. You know, you don't just get dipped in water and come up, a, you know, the same wet Negro that you went down. Right in Jesus, in East Prophet Esau's baptism, you had to go through a colonic. If you read this document, you're gonna see where he takes a, a gourd and he hollows it out, and he says, "Hollow it out and insert it into your hind parts with warm water, and inject, hold, and then release until all the worms and satans come out." This is an enema that the Prophet Esau was teaching, but this was a mandatory. This was like they they initiation. You couldn't just go to church and the, and the church, the doors of the church was open and you say, yeah, I accept the Lord. That's not his, that wasn't his way. You had to be clean. Then you had to go through an air purification where you sat out in the air for a period of time. He said that the angels of the sun, the angels of the air, the angels of water, and the angels of the earth have to all be pleased with you. And you have to be sweet smelling in all four of their sights and then sweet smelling before the God. Your breath has to be sweet smelling in the sight of the God. This is what he was teaching right here in this book. So where everybody else getting their teachings from, we're going to go to the source. This is what he taught, right? Okay, so let's go, let's go down further in this document. There's no question. He says that uh, after he says that if you will that the living God's word and his power may enter you, allow not your body and your spirit, your body is the temple. The body is the temple of the spirit and the spirit is the temple of God. Purify therefore the temple that the Lord of the temple may dwell therein and occupy a place that is worthy of him. Like I was saying, God knocked on your door. Shake out what the Obama's ain't want to live inside you. What kind of house you gonna put him in? Right? And from all temptations of your body and your spirit coming from Satan, withdraw beneath the shadow of God's heaven. Renew yourselves and what? Fast. For I tell you truly that Satan and his plagues may only be cast out by fasting and by prayer. By both, by fasting and by prayer, family. 
So this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said Islam is the perfect religion because in no other place was all of this so well thought out and then given to us. That's why Allah said, I have perfected for you this day and given you Islam as a religion because he took all of the best practices that make man a sin and he made it pillars for us, right? Prayer, fasting, both. He said that these Satans in his place can only be cast out when you pray and fast. But what are we spending the month of Ramadan doing? Those two things. We're supposed to be anyway, spending those, the, the, those this whole month doing those very two things, zikering, reading the Kasai's, and not eating. Thereby casting out Satan in his place. Thereby fulfilling what the Quranic verse says when it says fasting keeps one away from evil and indecency. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the opening of Hadith to Live says, no God or prophet can help us if he doesn't first change our dietary habits because Allah does not change a condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. Well, what is inside of your body? Your blood. That's the best to eat. We go everywhere else to change, but the thing that is most obvious, the thing that you can most directly control, putting what you put in your mouth and what you don't, that you can directly control. You don't need help with that. All you need is the discipline and the knowledge of what to and what not to, right? Once you have that, and if you can hear and obey, he's going to say later, you're going to hear him say the angels will hear and obey you. So watch this. He says, Go by yourself and fast alone and allow you and, and, um, and show your fasting to no man. So don't walk around announcing it. Be humble, right? Bible already teaches this. The living God shall see it and shall be your reward. And fast until Beelzebub and all his evils depart from you. We talked about this last week. When you purify that blood, even if you didn't have no religious practice, I told you all about a practice I did when I was younger, experimenting with this concept. I wanted to see what would just happen if I just stopped talking, stopped eating, stopped drinking, and was in an, in an isolated place, place for 72 hours. Seven plus two is nine. One complete blood cleansing cycle. If I just did not myself all external stimuli in that form, what would happen? And when I came out, I felt very, very light. And I was disgusted at trying to watch an episode of Cosby show. Just from that. Now, of course, I was praying, you know, because Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us prayers and I was reading, you know, descriptions and different things like that. But I didn't have what I have today. I, I mostly just was quiet. So imagine if imagine if a 72 hours straight without eating or without drinking, if I would have did a stock for my bihi for 70 hours straight. Because you know, one time recitation is 70,000 a stock for loss. So imagine that for 72 hours, no eating, on, no drinking, what that would have looked like three days later. Powerful, powerful, huh? right? So he says that, and fast until Beelzebub and all his evils depart from you. And the, all the angels and up the angels of our earthly mother, talking about mother nature, come and serve you. See, once, because remember, we were made for the angels and for creation to serve us. But that only happens when we're in a pure state. Allah says, when I, when I complete Adam, once I breathe my spirit in him, well, Allah's spirit can only be in a clean place. That's the secret to that verse. He don't just breathe his spirit anywhere because his breath is holy. So the dwelling place has to be holy. So once he breathed his spirit, his clean Holy Spirit into a clean vessel, the angels have no, no choice but to bow. And to be honest, even he bliss. If you purify it, according to this, there won't be no bliss there. Because bliss can only exist where there's impurity, right? Okay, so this is really, in this path, what this is showing you is that in this path, and this is something the prophet Isa didn't even have. We, we have, we have so, we don't even understand the magnitude of what we have. We have formulas and teachings that prophets cried about. The prophet uh, Ibrahim and his son, 
saw the day that we're in and just wish they could. He said, if I could just be a wayfarer, they just wanted to be on the sideline looking at the light that would be present today. And here we are with the light and some of us barely appreciate it. Man, we should be so thankful just for the time that we're in with the amount of tools that we have, stuff that even prophets didn't have. All praises due to him. So you want to make, according to this, the Lord of the temple that he may dwell therein and occupy a place that is worthy of him. Now what? Now, okay, I'm going to this, this second paragraph and I'm going to finish it out and then shake me some people take it down. And all of the temptations of your body and your spirit coming from Satan withdraw beneath the shadow of God's heaven. Renew yourself in fast. And I tell you truly that Satan and his plagues may only be cast out by fasting and by prayer. Go by yourself and fast alone. Show your fasting to no man. The living God shall see it and great shall be your reward. And fast until Beelzebub and his, all, all his evils depart from you and all the angels of our earthly mother come and serve you. For I tell you truly, except you fast, you shall never be free from the power of Satan and from all diseases that come from Satan. So according to this formula, Pastor, Jesus said, ain't no way a while around fast. He said, except that you fast. Ain't no other, ain't no alternative to this. Ain't no plan B to this, right? There's no, there's no water down for it. He said, except that you fast, you will never escape Satan's grip and all of his diseases and everything that comes from him. So I don't know where these people got their doctrines from. Yeah, yes, we do. They hid this because they wanted to use Christianity and misuse the teachings, like the lesson say, to hide their dirty religion, the, uh, uh, the, you know, to hide a dirty religion behind a righteous prophet's name. They did this, and they knew that if they taught the dietary teachings, they wouldn't have been able to control it. So they had to leave this out of Christianity. But honestly, they got more dietary teachings than we have as Muslims, because you're going to see in this book, he tells them exactly what to eat. But, you know, the prophet taught these things, too. But the difference is the prophet in the environment where they was in were already kind of practicing particular things. So he didn't have to do this as much. The area where Prophet Isa was at, he really, you know, was teaching some savages, and, you know, different things. So he had to really teach. But I'm saying they acting like Prophet Isa never said nothing about diet. And it's a complete lie. To go so far as to say, except that you fast. Like, if you don't fast, forget about it with God. That's basically what he said right here. Right? Fast and pray fervently, seeking the power of God. Pardon me. Fast and pray fervently, seeking the power of the living God for your healing. While you fast, excuse the sons of men and seek our earthly mother's angels. For he that seeks, he that seeks, pardon me, it keeps leaving me. Shake one second. He that seeks uh, shall find. Seek the fresh air of the forest and of the fields. There in the midst of them you shall find the angel of air. Put off your shoes and your clothing and suffer the angel of the air to embrace all your body and breathe long and deeply that the angel of air may be brought within you. I tell you truly, the angel of the air shall cast out of your body all uncleanness which defiled it without and within. So that's going into another area. But just right here, we could go further. You're going to see him mention the, the proper use of milk in there. He's going to hear him say in there that the cows were actually created for this purpose to digest the herbs of the field to give it to man as milk. It's literally in there. You're going to hear him talk about the eating of particular fruits like dates and figs. You're going to hear him uh, talk about a whole bunch of different things right here in the, the same gospel of peace. So like I said, I'm going to drop this into the chat. You all can study it. We can probably have another talk about it. But it's clear if we just went from, from the prophet Isa's teaching, he said, accept that you back. So this is why Ramadan was given to us as a mandatory component. 
of our way, a mandatory component, fast and pray fervently. Who prays more fervently than Sufis? Name. Who prays without ceasing more than Sufis? We spend all day. I, by Allah's grace, I got a reputation. Oh, the guy with the beads. That's what they call me. Oh, yeah, the guy with the beads. Because these beads are always with me and they're always moving. And that's just as it should be. But I feel the greatest effect when I'm in dietary harmony. And I feel a lesser effect when I'm in dietary opposition. So I'm saying to us, family, in the clothes. In the clothes now. Let's make dietary cleanliness a pillar of the Mu'ad way, of our Mu'ad, the Mu'ads that are under Sheikh Sufi Ba, and by Allah's grace under Sheikh Fawad Wali, and the Sheikhs in our Tariqa. Make this our dietary way. Cleanliness is a pillar of our faith, right? It's our way. And by Allah's grace, I'm here to serve in whatever capacity that I can offer. And I know there are other healers and other herbalists and others with knowledge. Let's come together and see if we can add an elite dietary practicing component to this order so that we will be the exemplary examples of Sheikh Ahmed Obama, the exemplary, the exemplary examples of Serene Salihu and our beloved Sheikh, the sword of Salihu and Sheikh Sufi Baba. Uh, there's uh, no other questions. I'll end the talk and then open the floor to questions. Uh, thank you for your ear during this time. Yes, Sheikh is also a scientist. That is true. That is right, uh, Sheikh Tali. No doubt. I, t I t tell you, um, interesting, Sheikh Sally. And Norfolk mentioned uh, that Sheikh is also a scientist. One of the definitions that Ron Nefer Amin used in the Metsunetic Volume 2, he said that a scientist is one who assesses the laws of creation and then utilizes, his, utilizes it for the advantages of the whole. So when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about these men that he calls the exalted assembly, who he said is the we that's speaking in the Quran, these men are scientists. He called them Muslim gods. How could, he said Allah is a righteous Muslim. How could Allah be a Muslim? Because we're looking at the, the religious connotation of Muslim and one who submits to Allah. So if Allah is Allah, how can he submit to somebody? Because that's not the only definition of Muslim. That's a religious surface level connotation of Muslim. Muslim is one who attains um, an unshakable level of peace. But guess how he attains that? through submission to Allah's will. When we say that, we're meaning the laws of the universe. The scientists, Allah himself, submit. He sets the law up and he submits to it himself. He doesn't fight his own way because the laws had to be there in the creation of the universe. The laws were already there inside of the atoms. He just brought it out and gave us a physical display of it. Right? Yes, Ramadan Kareem, beloved, I killed. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, oh, wow, Sheikh Gaye is on the call. Thank you, man. I wish I had saw that earlier. Thank you, Sheikh, for joining us. Um, alhamdulillah. Yes, fasting is a shield against Satan because think about it. The prophet Isa says in this, in this document, the Eastern Gospel of Peace, that the Satans are going to cause you to eat more and more and more. That's how, if, if you can feed the instinct, which is the naps, the four enemies have to be fed. They lose power if they're not fed. So we're constantly feeding them, and then we're feeding them, you know, too often, then naturally Satan can have his way with you because all of your appetites have you with no shield. So when you stop eating, now Satan can't get to you because the naps are not as strong. The instincts, they, they have to submit because they're used for the instincts, but the instincts are not supposed to rule the body. That will be left over right versus right over left. First of all, sorry, 
Does that make sense? How can we use the zikr to help in our fast? You only, uh, if you fast twice a week, alhamdulillah, you only experience, I've only experienced the supreme use of the zikr when I'm fasting. In fact, to the point where I like fasting more than I like eating because when I eat, I'm like, it's going to mess up my prayers. Because the brain, when that energy is focused, when the energy is focused, um, when the energy is focused down here, is less energy focused up here. It takes, a, it takes a great amount of energy to digest a meal. Even the lightest meal. Most of the blood in the body, most of the energy of the body goes to digest food. So when that food, when the brain is focusing on trying to break down something that is food, imagine trying to break something down that's not even food for the brain. Like, what the hell? What is this? Right? So I would say your zipper will only take supreme effect when you're back. This is why our beloved Sheikh said he never, they say Seren Sally will never ate. And when he did, he, he ate mostly to appease other people because he knew them. Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba, Kajim Rasul knew them. And this was part of their way. The yogis, they know this. The, 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 the avatars, the shamans, the netaru, every one of these kind of beings that you see in cultures, they always eat less. I couldn't be more for It's like they all have beads and they want to eat less. Okay, I went, I went, I went way longer than I was supposed to. You all let me like, now you went, you went right at an hour, shake all praise. You hit right at one hour. So I feel like, alhamdulillah. Oh, we just, um, we just at one hour now. Made it fun. Uh, we, 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 we just made an hour when you came on all praises. Oh, alhamdulillah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. I, um, I wanted to encourage questions, inshallah, before before yes. I said anything will close out. If any, if I'm just encourage anybody if there are any particular questions for the shake. At this time, inshallah, um, all praise the floor. Mike is definitely open, inshallah. Please ask questions. We love questions. Let's see who's on the call with us tonight. Um, we got Baba Lau on the call. Alhamdulillah. Beloved Baba Lau. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to have you. Thank Gaye. I'm, I'm elated, man. I was thinking about you earlier today. Alhamdulillah. Mr. Gaye is the one that wrote us, that gave us the translation of Sindidi, Matnabu Fazani, and Wakana Hakan, and Rumna Shakur. So go to Amazon and check out his uh, his translation of those because he gives us some secrets in there. So I'm sorry, what was the question? Say it again. Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikh Farah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. I um, have a controversial question for you. Okay, of course. <laughs> um, you know us coming from the nation we always got to be extra but um absolutely that's our expertise is extra that's true all right well i can't hear you anymore sister if you're if you're speaking the follow ramadan i've been upset stomach trying to eat later so I wanted to ask you, is it better for me to continue the way you taught us to eat, even during this time? Or should I just go ahead and do Ramadan? No, no, we should do Ramadan. I mean, the, the honorable Elijah mommy said that we should, you know, we any fast is going to be good for us. Are you saying in terms of eating from sun up to sundown? Because if the sundown is only about an hour later. Well, no, it's no, that's not true. It's later now. So eat, eat, um, just eat lighter. Even though you're eating later, just eat lighter. Eat more light. Okay. So, you know, let me give you some foods. Load up on lentils. You know, like the okay. blended lentils, like the Indians eat. Load up on soups. Try to stay away from a whole lot of heavy stuff because it is later and closer to night, you know. But no, do, do Ramadan. Eat some, you know, do, of course, do the holy practice of Ramadan, but just eat lighter when you eat. Yes, sir. If that makes sense. Yes, that was an easy answer. Thank you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Shakran. We love you, Shake Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Alhamdulillah. Birthday 6 Sufi Ba.
Anybody else with a question? <laughs> Stock for lot. We may have to. You may have to open up the Nara Institute. Shake. Stock yeah, fly. that's what it's sounding like, ain't it? <laughs> we got to get a class going. I want to get a class going soon, but I'm trying not to do it until Ramadan is over. So maybe right <laughs> after Ramadan, we could jump in. Shake Gaius, you the senior Shake on our uh, on our call, and it's it's an honor to have you here. Man, I, I feel like a, a little nephew that found out his uncle was in the room. Uh, <laughs> I did not know you were with us. Would you, would you give us a few words uh, from your wisdom and understanding the Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba of what you know that he said about fasting? Sheikh Aye, are you there with us? Uh, as alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum wa salam, Sheikh. Yeah, Thank you yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be very uh, honored to uh, share a little bit of uh, uh, the words about uh, fasting from our beloved Sheikh Shah Mubamba, uh, who taught us that you know fasting is a is a shield uh, yes. against uh, against Satan. Yes. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, you know, when, when you when you fast, uh, it's like uh, all the, you know, Satan is like, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's in prison, like some of Satan is like, yes. he's, he's yes. in prison. Yes. yes. So he cannot have, he cannot uh, have control over, over your, over, over yourself, right? Yes. That's so right. You have, you, so you, you 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 have it's like you have power over over Shaitan. Yes, good teaching, good teaching. Shaitan. Because your, your your spirit uh, elevate your, the elevation of your spirit becomes higher and higher. Yeah, and then you yes. get more, more focus on worshiping and, and remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, that's like when you fast. Okay, not not do not, not, it's not only you. Uh, you abstain from eating and drinking, drinking, but all the parts of your body, all the limbs, also are fasting at the same time. Right? It means that you you stay away from uh, listening what is haram, or you you stay away from watching what is unlawful. Also, you abstain from eating and drinking. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a it's a, it's vast. You know, fasting is very vast. And you know, it's not only it's not only abstaining from eating and drinking, but all the parts of your body has to fast. The ears, you know, the the everything in your body, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the foods, you know, the arms, everything should fast mm -hmm. together. So that's yes. how you can convince shaitan, and that's how the shield uh, is put between you and the shaitan. Right. So it's very, yeah. These are these are very good uh, teaching from Shaman over Shaman Obama. Yes, thank you, thank you for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know that I mentioned a stock for Labihi is one of my favorite mm -hmm. uh, exercises to do during the fast. I know that it's a cleansing. But what would you say would be if you had to give us if they, if they were going to put you somewhere? let's say in an experiment and they're gonna put you on the fast and they say, Shake guy, hey, you can only take one Kasai with you. What would be the, the most uh, to you yeah. useful Kasai during a fast? Yeah, yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely choose a stack for Ah. As you as you as as you mentioned, yeah, as you as you mentioned, because they, they go together with, with Ramadan. Yes. Yeah. Because uh Astaghfirullah is about, you know, uh, it's about like Tawbah, repentance. Yes. yes. Uh, that, we can call it repentance. It's a casita of repentance. So yes. it, it makes it easy for us to, to, to get a spiritual elevation, like your fast, and, yes. and Allah is being pleased with you. Allah, for example, myself, every day before I breakfast, 
before breakfast, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reciting a sakful of bihi. Right after I eat my bread, uh, my date and break my fast, I recite mm -hmm. a sakful of bihi. Yeah, yes. I feel, yeah, I feel, yeah, I feel like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has accepted my prayer. Allah mm. Subhanahu wa Taala has accepted my psalm, my fasting. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and I have, I feel to be like uh, closer to Allah. Mm. Because, because of the kasai of astaghfirullah bihi that I recite right after my breakfast. Yes. And um, I can be assured that my my fasting is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sheikh. Yeah, we, we really, we're really glad to have you with us. Um, I'm, the pleasure is here. Uh, as a senior in this Sheikh Akbadu Bamba way, I pray that what we said tonight was... Uh, I mean... Was, Met your approval. And, I mean, uh, I mean, and uh, and we we, we thank you. So, Sheikh Mustafa, I think we covered. It looked like um, there are, and make sure, like I said, you all go and, and check out the um, the Kasai's that that Sheikh Gaye. I like mm -hmm. his transliteration. They're very easy. The yeah. thing that I love most is that he gives mm -hmm. us uh, he gives us extras. Like like I give you an example. There's one. Jewel that he gives. Mm -hmm. This should help sell a couple of Wakana Hakans mm -hmm. for you. There's a verse mm -hmm. that he mentions from Sheikh mm -hmm. Ahmadu Bamba that's in Wakana Hakan translation that he did that you say this verse mm -hmm. three times before you enter into places and it uh it, mm -hmm. it brings a particular response. I use this all the I I fell in love with that verse so much that I keep it on me. So just before mm -hmm. I walk into places, I could do it. So I, I got that from his translation. So Make sure you go check it out on Amazon. Uh, the ones yeah. that I know about that he did, mm -hmm. Wakana Hakan, uh, mm -hmm. Mahabou Fazani, Rumna mm -hmm. Shakur, and uh, is there others? And there are other, there are other two that are going to be released soon. Okay, right after, after Ramadan, yes. Ramadan inshallah. I'm doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, please yeah. support Sheikh. And also, uh, Sheikh Sufi Ba told me to mention um, that, you know, th those of you all who want to help support Dr. Wali and his uh, ability to be able to continue nutritional education for our order. And, uh, you know, just in general, you all know many times I've been called upon and I'll do consultations for free. I love it that much. But of course, it helps. So if you all want to donate and uh, send a donation to me, it'll be greatly accepted. And they allow rewards so that even the intention of the donation will be you know, yeah. receive. So thank you for that. Uh, if there's I mean, no other questions, um, anybody have any more questions before we close out in prayer? Did you all enjoy the talk tonight? Amen. 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 Yes, yes. Okay. Say it again. Say it. I said, I said, they're mad at you, Shake. We all mad at you. Oh, praise. We can't, we can't eat no more. Yeah, yeah, y'all are mad at me because I can't no, no, no more Popeye sandwiches. No more, <laughs> no more white casket. And, and, <laughs> oh, praise. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, you know, hopefully yeah. you all get on the cleanse and once, you know, we get some parasites because it's really your parasites that's mad at me. It's not you. So you know, if I were to ask any questions, Shake, you mentioned the cleanse. Is that something you can talk about now? Would you would that uh give a brief overview of the of your product? Like you said, um support, inshallah. If sure, sure. Come, if, if everybody would stick please. around for a few more minutes, uh I think somebody in the chat say keep going. So I could talk about that for a few minutes. I have a, a detoxifying product that uh is focuses completely on gut health. It uh is a is a colon cleanse, but it's really a, a full body cleanse because the colon is the full body. Uh, if you go to watch some of my videos, you'll see where I talk about this. Uh, so when you cleanse it, you're automatically cleansing other organs. It is a powder, it's a fiber, one ingredient, a uh, very, very ancient herb that I have a proprietary process that I do to make it even stronger. You take it, stir it up into 10 to 12 uh, ounces of fluid, and uh, if you're not diabetic, I recommend juice with lots of pulp because the pulp goes well with the, with the texture of the product. You stir it up, you drink it straight down, don't sip it, drink it. 
straight down. And when you drink it straight down, uh, you will, it will go in and swell up inside the gut. And when it swells up inside the gut, it uh, takes everything out, liquid, solid, parasitic, metallic, uh, solid, every, in every way. When he says everything, Islam, pardon self. Yes. When he yes. says everything, he literally means everything. It, <laughs> takes, it takes your wall, it takes the walls from your intestines and it just drags them out. <laughs> it, man, I looked at that, man, what? <laughs> Uh, that sounds like this, somebody who used the Dr. Detox this, product. This detox is paramount. <laughs> is it's I put man, it is it, yes. bro. It that's yes. the best detox I've ever had. Alhamdulillah. Thank Alhamdulillah. You Thank you for that, beloved. I appreciate Mashallah. that. <laughs> so as you can see, we're not exaggerating. It's not just a sales pitch. Uh, you know, it it is it is highly effective. And it will definitely bring you to a, a newer you. So uh, the product is a month supply. It's a fifty dollar product. It costs about sixteen. To, I mean, about fifteen to ship. Uh, but I've you know done a special in the order since I've been in the order that if you want one container, let's say fifteen plus the fifty, you can cash out to me, or you send if you want two, then I'll cover the shipping. I'm on back order right now, so I'm waiting on. I, I for the first time went through some little. Uh, manufacturing glitches, but I'm waiting on a big supply to come in. But you know, you all know how it works. Once they come, they'll be gone. So if you want to lock in your container, send that that uh, that purchase to Cash App, and I'll ship it right out to you uh, anywhere in the country. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it's going to solve all of your parasitic candida because it absorbs yeast. Even for diabetics, it absorbs sugar out of the blood. So this product will help you as a diabetic. Uh, it absorbs all of the liquid and solid toxins. So, and it's going to be, it's not like going to be like a embarrassing elimination like x lax It's a bulk fight. So it's going to, it's going to swell up and become the intestines, uh, the size of the intestine itself. So it's not going to um, embarrass you. Like you'll be somewhere you can't control yourself. It's going to be where you can control it. But once it happens, it's just going to be a lot. And it's going to be way more than what you thought because it's going to be such an easy elimination that you wouldn't have no clue that that's how much you eliminated. And it's going to go and get waste that's been in you since you were a child because the average person has anywhere from 15 to 50 pounds of uneliminated waste from undigested meals that's been there since we were children. My product, I designed it uh, to go in and sweep and clean the gut completely. Now, the only thing is my product takes, like Akil just said, I didn't exaggerate, it takes out everything. So that means uh, all of the bacteria. So you, so this is where the step two comes in because the step two is like a meal plan. It's in the inside of the lid. When you open up the lid, pull the little piece of the uh, like foam piece back and you're gonna see the eye of the raw looking at you. When you take the eye of the raw, open it up, you're gonna see a healthy colon, the unhealthy colon, all the foods that's under the unhealthy colon, avoid them because they're going to interfere with the cleanse. Now, you can still eat, to be honest, even still ate them, it still would work, but it's just going to make it a little slow, but it still would work. Um, and then the foods on the healthy colon side, you can, you can eat. And I mentioned some particular friendly bacteria foods that you want to load up on because probiotics you need to use probiotics to put friendly bacteria back in the gut because my product takes it all out. So that, that's the thing. So that's going to be a younger you, a healthier you. Our illustrious Sheikh said that uh, that it helped him improve his vision, uh, everything. So it's, I mean, it's it's just it's a dynamic product, and I'm not saying that just because I designed it and accelerated it, but I'm saying it because Allah gave it to me as the uh, as the one thing to use. It's been the main thing that I've pushed. I only have two products in my line and it's that product and a, uh, a Colon Cleanse Supreme, which is a heavy metal detox formula. But I don't even really advertise that much because really people don't really need it. You get on the, the, the level one formula, the level one should suffice you. So that's pretty much it. That's the product in a nutshell. I'm gonna drop the video that I did about it in the chat and I'll drop the cash app in there too. If you all are interested, uh, 
and and if and if not at a later time if you're interested i appreciate it until then i'm gonna put the cash out now into the uh because i think say that was a, a beautiful fly you did too say i appreciate how you uh you put that glow effect around the, around it it made it look like the the power of the zikta was taking you know taking flight i appreciated that so um here's the um i'm gonna put the cash tag there for anybody that is interested in getting proud of or anybody that's just interested in supporting Sheikh Fard Wali. I appreciate you. Thank you all for a wonderful night of listening. I know I went in and hopefully I covered everything that everybody wanted to hear as best as I could. Um, what I was thinking, uh, Sheikh Mustafa, since you opened up in the prayer, wanted to close out and then allow uh, Say Gaye to do a do a for us afterwards since we're uh, well, coming to the close of Ramadan. If that's okay with you, say Gaye. Mine to take mine, all praise. Yes, inshallah. With that, just gonna ask Shay Guy if you give us a do our close out. Asalam alaikum, Shay Guy. For those again, for those who don't know, Shay Guy is our friend in Tuba Senegal, helping us to translate these beautiful kasads of Sheikh Ahmed Duban. But we appreciate him for all he's he's taught us thus far. Inshallah, we pray we can get back in his class. Soon, inshallah, yes. we do yes. have an, a part of that indeed. Is to memorize Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, inshallah. Yes. But nevertheless, Derry Jeff, Sheikh Fard, for your teachings, all praises. I appreciate you. It is an honor. I'm glad to have you back. All praise, and we look forward to more teachings, and we and we hope that we can have a uh, another another institute soon, inshallah, by, by indeed the Sheikh, inshallah. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah, Sheikh Supervisor. Uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Guy, are you, are you available to give us a close out with a dua, inshallah? Your mic, is off. Your mic is off if, you, if you're speaking, beloved. Stop along. Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Idina Sirat al Mustakim, Sirat al Lezina and Amtalihim, Gail Makubi Alihim of the Lin Amin, Allah Mosali Allah Sidina Mohammed in Salaz and Tunajina, Behavin Jamil Ahwali will ever, what a Dirana Behajami al Hajat, what a Tahiruna Behavin Jami Isayat, what a Fauna Beha in Daka al Derajat, what a Balaguna Beha Axel Rayat, Min Jami al Hayat, Il Hayat, Ubad al Mamat. اللهم صل على سيدنا وعلانا محمد وسلم تسليما سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين آمين Thank you beloved Sheikh for your presence and uh, for your dua and uh, we, we, we greatly appreciate you all's time um, and I know it's time to break fast. So y'all ready to get out of here? Go make a lot and go eat. So, I want to hold y'all up any further. And um, y'all got any questions? Y'all know how to reach me. May Allah bless you to continue to feel good like Allah always should. And with the blessings of Serene Tuba, Barke Sheikh Ibra Fall, Barke Serene Salihu, Barke Sheikh Sufi Ba. I mean, I mean. Assalamu alaikum, family. Assalamu alaikum, family. Assalamu alaikum.